What is nice to see is a lot of conversations surrounding the games are now shifting to the athletes because for far too long uh, in the last few months, it's all been COVID, COVID, COVID. Of course, the concerns still remain and uh, they remain with everybody. Uh, but at least we are starting to hear about uh, the athletes. But to be very honest, um, for me, the Olympic Games uh, mean much more than just a sporting event, and just a sporting competition where a 300 odd gold medals will be given out during the course of two weeks. For me, the Olympic Games stand as a sign of unity. Uh, it stands as a sign of uh, uh, the world coming together. In two weeks time, the Olympic Village, for example, will perhaps be the most unique place on the planet. 206 Olymp national Olympic committees, meaning 206 nations and one Olympic refugee team will be staying together in friendship and respect and uh, competing in intense competition. So I think um, the spirit that is so unique to an Olympic Games is needed than ever before, especially with what we've seen in the last couple of years uh, around the world with the pandemic. I mean, there has been an excess of nationalism and an excess of egoism. And I think the Olympic Games um, is a real chance to show uh, and, and get this Olympic spirit back uh, and remind the world that it is still possible to unite. So for me, that is the most important thing. Of course, looking forward to really top class sporting action. But of course, it's much more than just uh, a sports event. Uh there has been no sort of Olympics like this uh, in our living memory, as as far as uh, uh, we are, uh, uh, as far as sort of we can remember. Um, you know, the the war the war stopped the Olympics, and then now the pandemic has stopped it. I mean, is this an ideal time for the Olympics itself to refresh itself? Because there was all this uh, uh, sort of focus on it that it's become too big, it's too many people, too many countries, too much. You know, that kind of thing. Is this almost an ideal? Uh, uh, kind of, uh, you can actually reboot and and uh, uh, show people what the Olympic stands. Well, I think uh, we are going to live in a post-COVID world, uh, and the whole world is going to change. Uh, and sport will also have to learn to adapt. And the Olympic movement is by far is by no means there will be a great degree of reset even within the Olympic movement. We're already seeing that happen, uh, and we're already. Uh, I think the IOC is already working on how a post-COVID Olympic movement would look like. So uh, I expect uh, many learnings from this, many uh, many uh, changes, may, a lot to a uh, lot of adaptability coming into place uh, in in the in the next uh, Olympic cycle. Um, so I think um, there will be a, a definite change. I mean, if even if you look at the whole Paris 2024 model, it's so so unique with with the whole social enterprise and then the social business model of the whole Olympic project, which is very unique. Uh, it's never been done uh, done before, I mean, even from procurement contracts where you have to, they're making sure that, you know, it, uh, uh, it helps uh, the smaller companies, the smaller corporations. Uh, so I think there is a reset button that is going to happen. The world has to reset and for sure sport too will have to reset. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we'll also see uh, uh, like the Olympics heading towards more and more gender parity. In fact, uh, this will be the most number of women athletes uh, in an Olympics ever. Yeah. Paris 2024 will be exactly the equal number. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I think uh, the the, but, the youth the youth Olympic Games in Argentina saw the first uh, competition, which was totally uh, which had gender parity. Uh, and I okay. think Tokyo is already very close. And I think Paris for sure will be will be there. I think. For example, the sport right. of shooting has a fifty uh, has already achieved uh, gender equality, so there are equal number of men, equal yeah. number of women, same amount of events, which is wonderful to see. And I think uh, the sports movement, the Olympic movement, is leading in this way uh, and showing the world uh, uh, the importance of gender equality and and really showcasing that with concrete action on the ground. So I think that's wonderful to see. Right. And it's very interesting what you said about the Olympic Village being this unique space where, you know, like nations will unite and um, and even for athletes and literally it, it'll be a, a chance to like finally exhale um, in a way because, uh, you know, they've gone through a, a whole year of uncertainty. There was a whole, you know, months without sports, locked up in their houses, didn't know whether where to go and what to do. Um did you ever think of if you were in a situation like this and you were gearing up for the 2020 Olympics in 2020 and it got 
you know postponed and you didn't know if it's going to happen and then it got postponed by a year how would you have handled that uh, that time period um you know what does it do to an athlete in terms of their preparations in terms of the mental state as well i think it calls for a degree of flexibility and adaptability and i think uh, athletes are unique in that way because uh, athletes are flexible and adaptable because that's what sport demands of them uh, and this is just a scenario where they've had to bring that uh, to the table um uncertainty we all live in uncertain times i mean in sport sport is all about uncertainty but of course this has been a very unique situation especially the time you know last year when athletes were completely locked in uh, could not even access any sports facilities i think more than the physical element it was the mental element which was uh, athletes had to go through the, the mental health element but i think society in yeah. general had to uh, go through that so um i think just being flexible and open minded and be ready to adapt that would be that would have been my mantra if i was to go and compete in in tokyo i mean even now you you you're going to go into the olympic village 5 days prior to your event i think that's the time allowed so it's not much time you have to learn how to adapt quickly i mean athletes coming in from areas where there is a jet lag in ball you have to fo- you have to prepare for that already in advance i think you should start getting into a time zone a couple of days prior maybe um and and also the time in tokyo is going to be restricted and you know you have to plan your day so that you remain in a in a in a good uh, frame of mind but also things can change you know something happens yeah. i mean you don't know so just if you remain flexible go with the flow to a certain degree because nobody really knows what's going to happen next so if you if you go with that kind of attitude you'll just be more open to change and open and you'll just be ready to adapt a little bit faster and the athletes mm-hmm. who would be able to adapt that little bit faster will probably be the ones uh, who would come through in uh, and 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 perform well right uh- I mean if the indian shooting contingent is very very young uh you know there are a lot of that teenagers in there the people in their early 20s is this something you think that's going to be easier for them because there there's there's less baggage when you're when you're a teenager what what do you think yeah a younger brain means a more plastic brain so more flexible <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so i think it's an advantage i think uh, um i think a younger person is just able to adapt a little bit faster Uh, and i and I, i i'm just looking at it from a point of view of a fan uh, you know as an athlete i was not very positive but as a <laughs> sports fan i've suddenly become very positive and i really hope uh, and i look at things from a very positive point of view i don't know why but that's just the way it is so i look at it uh, from a very positive angle and that you know we have a young guy team and they'll just be able to adapt to these changing circumstances much more efficiently like uh, in comparison to an old horse like me but um, yeah i think it would be an advantage and also a lot of them are first time olympians so um yeah i think the uniqueness also of uh, olympic games is um, you know uh, uh, the overload and Olymp- the sensory overload and olympic games brings uh, you know you enter an olympic village you see all these things uh, you see all these athletes that, that aura that atmosphere um that is uh, existing in a uh, olympic uh, arena in an olympic competition is a sensory overload when it's a sensory overload you're going to you're going to cognitively decline and that's going to affect your performances <laughs> but there is not going to be a, there is no sensory overload at the moment there are no spectators <laughs> you're pretty much locked into your room uh, i guess and go to compete so it's much more closer to a normal tournament that you are used to competing in So again, I yeah. think it would uh, it should play up to our to our advantage. I'm being right. positive here. Yeah. 